in about 2004, there was actually a really remarkable discovery of a, of a small human known as Homo floriensis from an Indonesian island called Floris. This specimen, popularly referred to as the Hobbit, caused a big stir on its discovery. What was remarkable about the Hobbit was that the face was almost the same as you'd expect in a modern human, but the brain was actually similar in size to that of a chimpanzee. That puzzled anthropologists initially because this sort of phenomenon had never been known before in our own evolutionary history. There is a spectacular collection here in the Natural History Museum of dwarf hippo skulls that are found on the island of Madagascar. And they're actually extinct, but we have quite a lot of evidence for their existence. This um, species here that we find in the lowlands of Madagascar, where it was quite swampy and big open lakes and spaces, we find they had quite elongate crocodile-like skulls. We think this is because they were probably quite well adapted to living in water, whereas the other hippopotamus up in the mountains, the skull is much shorter, so it hasn't got the sort of classic periscopic eyes we think of in the common hippopotamus, which allowed it to see out of the water when it was submerged. There is this trend that large animals that become isolated on islands do tend to reduce their body size. If an animal arrives on an island for the first time, it suddenly has all this food and not necessarily any predators. And it could be a kind of paradise where they just have everything they want and there's no necessity to be big. We're interested in what happens to mammals when they become smaller. Are, are there unusual effects of this process, which we think is quite rapid? Madagascar has this collection of semi-fossilized material that is remarkably abundant and fantastically preserved, which we could actually use to measure brain capacity and the overall volume of the skull. When we actually compared these skulls with the common hippopotamus, we found that the brains of these dwarf hippopotami were about 30% smaller than an animal of equivalent body mass. That was quite a large difference and was clearly, clearly evident in all of the fossils. Homo erectus had a slightly smaller brain than modern humans have. So if you say took Homo erectus and scaled that down to the equivalent body size of the Hobbit and see whether the similar degree of reduction would match. And basically it did. The evidence from the pygmy hippos really does suggest that the process of dwarfism could have explained it. We now actually have quite a substantial body of evidence to support the idea that the hobbit is actually the result of a mainland ancestor such as Homo erectus becoming isolated on an island. Then the process of evolutionary dwarfism would have been responsible for reducing the size of its brain.